when looking at the whole set of design criteria was to do with the underlying model on which this was based. We asked ourselves, what's the evidence that there's a valid success model? I think the sort of discussion you will have had last week with Gary Rumler would be very much centered around the idea that there is some model to a performance. If your training doesn't change performance, what's it doing? In specifying a change, you're specifying that there is a desired outcome of some kind. But where do we get our evidence that a particular <coughs> behavior or skill or outcome is the thing you should be training towards? Frequently, that evidence is lacking. Now, how, how serious is that? Well, if your training is not performance related, if you put on training as a kind of act of corporate goodwill and you measure your success through some kind of smiles test that people go away liking it, that's probably not a very important criterion. On the other hand, if the criterion by which you are being judged is performance change, then if you're teaching the wrong thing, the better you teach it, the worse the mess you're in. So, one of the things which is becoming very evident is that the last four or five years have begun to evolve much, much more powerful methods of skills teaching. And as these methods have evolved, a really fundamental question has come up. How do we know that the things we're teaching are the right things to teach? And where does that evidence come from? 